Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today is Thursday, which means it is update Thursday on Old School RuneScape, and today is the first of the game integrity changes to the game. If you guys don't know what these game integrity changes are, pretty much they released a bunch of poll options a while ago, and I've been asking the community over the past year or so, what are some of the integrity changes they want to see come to the game? Today is the first batch finally coming into the game. Quickly before we get into the updates though, I just want to ask you guys if you enjoy having the background music in these update videos. Usually I do these without any background music, but I figured you guys might enjoy it a bit more. Maybe it's a bit, I don't know, more relaxing. It's not just my voice and nothing else. So if you guys like the background music, please let me know if you guys want me to go back to nothing in the background. That's cool too. If you guys want more information about these game integrity changes that are coming to the game in the upcoming future, right in the news post right here you can see there's a clickable game integrity link and when you click on that, you're going to be brought to this page right here, protecting game integrity, upcoming changes, and you can see all these things here are most likely going to be changed in the future. It's a really nice thing to read through because there's a lot of cool things coming out, so if you guys want to take a look at it, then definitely click on the link and see what's coming. Just to name a few of them, we have pickpocketing NPC changes, anti-dragon fire shield changes, the magic guild store changes, one of the biggest ones here is the duel arena changes, gravestone changes, and other potential changes here that they're not sure they're going to bring out yet, but things that they may implement as well. Definitely worth reading through, and if you guys have any opinions on these changes, please leave your comments below because I'd love to see what you guys have to say about them. The first game integrity change of today is a change to the duel arena. Now, this is not the big one that they've been talking about, but rather a smaller one to help tackle scammers. They are making this change to prevent unexpected items such as darts and runes from entering duels when an opponent may not be expecting it. So now you are no longer able to empty or uncharge any of the following weapons. Trident of the Seas, the Trident of the Seas E, the Trident of the Swamp, the Trident of the Swamp E, Toxic Blowpipe, and the new Sanguinesti Staff. The next change is a change to the Magic Training Arena. If you guys didn't know, this place is pretty heavily botted, especially the Dragonstone area and the Enchanting Chamber. Originally, the suggestion was to switch the requirements to 68 Magic, but most bots actually have 68 Magic, so it would be unaffected. They have decided to change the point system now when enchanting the shape, so they now scale per enchant type similar to Dragonstones. A Sapphire yields 1 point, Emerald 2, Ruby 3, Diamond 4, Dragonstone 5, Onyx 6, and a Zenite is 7. Additionally, the bonus points given for enchanting the correct shape has been increased from 1 point to 2 points. This next change is one that I'm sure many Iron Men who watch this video will be extremely happy with because there are finally changes to the Wine of Zamrak spawn that is north of Falador. As you guys know, it is heavily botted. Each world has minimum like 2 bots that are trying to telegrab the wines and it's super annoying. Pretty much the only world that's open most of the time are 1500, 1750, or 2000 total level skill worlds. To help deter the botting of Wine of Zamis, they propose that the Monks of Zami on the ground floor would be aggressive when the Wine of Zami is taken, even when telegrabbed. So as to not to disrupt a valuable free-to-play money-making method, they also propose the construction of a second floor. So a second floor, accessible by ladder, has been added. Accessing this floor requires 500 total level and a set of Zamrak robes. Members can also equip the Zami vestment top and bottom. Telegrabbing the Wine of Zami on this second floor would not result in the Monk of Zamrak becoming aggressive although picking it up by hand will. Hopefully you guys who dreaded going here on an Iron Man will actually not mind coming here now because there's going to be hopefully a lot more open worlds and a lot less bots, so that's a very nice change in my opinion. Next up we have a change to the classic place to buy your battle staff, Zaf Store in Varrock. So to make it more difficult for bots to purchase all of Zaf's stocks, they propose adding at least partial completion of what lies below. This is not to be confused with the dire reward and other staffs in the store will remain accessible without meeting this requirement. Initially it was met with some concern from purists because if you want to complete what lies below you actually actually get 2,000 defense XP as a reward. So they decided that partial completion of what lies below will now unlock access to the battle staves. This is going to be after the battle in the library, but before you speak to Rat Burgess to complete the quest. During the quest, they added some dialogue showing that you can actually buy battle staves now before you finish the quest, just to make sure that nobody's getting accidental defense XP. Hopefully this means that the bots will not be constantly buying out his stock and every world will have more in stock most of the time. The box trap change has finally come out today as well. So to aid legitimate players when competing against bots, initially we pitched the idea of having completion of Eagle's Peak required to be able to use box traps. This was received very positively with no notable concerning feedback. In order to use box traps, players will now have to have progressed through Eagle's Peak quest until the point where they have been shown how to catch the ferret. They felt that this was the best option as it's possible for you to release the ferret after it's been captured in the quest. They've also added a non-combat alternative for completion of Eagle's Peak because previously you had to kill the Kebet and now you're able to threaten the Kebet causing it to retreat. Now the Eagle's Peak quest is a very easy quest to complete and the requirements are very low, but I think this change will definitely help a bit with the amount of bots in the game at the moment. I think that it may be an issue in the future with the completion of Eagle's Peak because like I said, it's pretty easy, but at the moment, it should help. So that was the first batch of the game integrity changes coming into the game. Please let me know what you guys think of them. I think that, I mean, for the most part, you guys are going to like them. They're going to prevent bots. They're going to help out players who actually play the game. So for the most part, 
Great changes in my opinion. And now in the end of the new section, if you guys are fans of balloon travel in the game, you can now store 100 of each type of log used in balloon travel in a storage crate, conveniently placed beside the balloons. Back in April, if you attempted to shove a player who'd recently been shoved or an NPC that wasn't shovable, the special attack would refuse to act, but your combat would be stalled as though you had done an attack. In May, they released a small patch that your combat would no longer be stalled by the failed special attack. Now, this was okay in PvM, but players doing PvP didn't like it because they wanted their combat to be stalled so they wouldn't receive unexpected combat XP. They've therefore reverted the change in PvP only. The rest of the and other news changes are pretty small changes, nothing really to talk about. The PvP worlds are now on the active current road of period A, and they're going to stay like that. And until Thursday the 12th of July. That is it for the old school RuneScape updates of today. Again, if you guys want to take a look at all the stuff I talked about, I will leave links in the description. And now we're going to head over to the RuneLite updates to see what's new on the RuneLite client. Today's update is the 1.4.5 release, and the first update is an inventory tag plugin which was added to let you tag items in your inventory, which then get outlined by a specific color. The opponent info plugin now has an option to show and compare the stats of an opponent you interact with. An inventory viewer was added which lets you overlay a view of your inventory, and finally a court beast plugin was added as well. There are some small improvements and bug fixes added in today's update as well, so if you guys want to take a look at them, here is everything that was changed. That's pretty much it for the relate updates of today. Thank you guys again for tuning in to today's video i do greatly appreciate it. if you guys make it this far please leave a like on the video and don't forget to leave your comments on today's update as well hope to see you next time have a good one and peace